Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about learning SQL. How long does it take to learn SQL? What does it mean to actually be proficient in SQL? And what's the fastest way to learn SQL if you're starting out from the very beginning or you know another language like pandas? I love this topic because my boss approached me many years ago about learning SQL on the job in my first few weeks when I didn't know anything about it. And I was pretty intimidated at first, but over time I realized there's a few tricks that you can use to master the language. And after around four to five weeks, I felt like a super master at SQL. So let's dive into to how to learn SQL super quickly and what does it mean to actually be competent in SQL. So the first question everyone has is how long does it actually take to learn SQL? It really depends on your goal, right? So if you're trying to become a data scientist or a data analyst, then you really do have to master SQL in the sense of running a lot of analytics queries and knowing a lot of intricacies about the language. But if your goal is instead actually to just stop bugging your, the data analyst on your team, maybe you're non-technical, you're like a customer success manager, or maybe even a product manager, then you're looking to just find ways in which you can actually pull data on your own for 90% of the queries and then go to your data scientist for like the last 10%. So all in all, it really depends on your goal. And so for me, when I first started learning and what I think can be achieved right now, I think anyone can actually master SQL and become a SQL wizard in around four to six weeks. And I'll tell you exactly why. In my opinion, there's different levels of SQL proficiency out there, which means like how good you can get at becoming SQL. Once you understand what your goal is, it becomes a lot easier for you to figure out than what level of proficiency you want. For example, beginner level of SQL proficiency to me is the fact that you understand how where statements work in terms of filtering your data set. You understand the difference between a left and a right join, and you can do some basic aggregations as getting the sum of a table or the average or a count. This kind of basic level of exposure to SQL allows you to do a lot of things that you do on Excel or some other kind of data analysis tool. All right, so how do you measure SQL proficiency, right? There's a lot of different certifications out there, and there's a lot of different kinds of skill tests. But at the end of the day, what we should be measuring it on is an intuitive measurement of exactly how good you are at SQL. And to me, that means exactly doing specific tasks, right? And so I think the beginner level proficiency of SQL is generally just being able to function on your own in terms of getting data out of one source and putting it to another source. And I see this for a lot of beginning data scientists that know one type of tool really well, such as like Pandas or Excel. And all they really need from SQL is to be able to pull the data out so that's not too big in a specific file format and get it into pandas, right? So if we we're to actually nail this down into actual specific skill and SQL syntax you would use, it'd be very basic group buys. You should be able to know how to conduct inner joins and left joins or right joins basically to get the data that you want. And you should be able to do some pretty basic aggregations as well. So getting like a count of the table, getting the average out of a specific value, all the kind of beginner analytics stuff that you'd expect anyone to understand if they're just getting started. Additionally, I think I think just basic filtering is big here. So just understanding what the where statement does and how you can filter out your data also really helps. So next up, we have this intermediate kind of proficiency level. And I would say for the intermediate proficiency level, to me, this is about actually getting more serious about analytics queries and not relying on data analysts and data scientists on your team as much anymore. You see this a lot with financial analysts or business analysts that kind of know Excel or Pandas really well. And now they're transferring that knowledge into SQL. Or if you're starting out with SQL, just getting really good at like financially modeling or kind of basic analytics like getting the first or the last transaction for each customer each month, right? So we're doing like two kind of aggregations here, right? We're not just getting like the first row for every customer, which is kind of a basic aggregation. We're also doing it for like each month as well, or with another group by. Some other kind of specific syntax key areas where you can figure out if you're at this level or not is like, do you know how to handle null values? Are you confident with using different types of joins, right? And so before we were talking about uh, beginners should know the difference between a left join and a right join, but the intermediate level actually know when to use it in every single kind of situation. Then lastly, we're talking about understanding subqueries. So when should you be using a subquery, right? When do we run self joins here? To me, intermediate level is really shown when you can actually create a dashboard that represents the date and time on the x-axis and some value on the y-axis, right? That I think is kind of like the basic levels of intermediate because you're doing this like kind of basic level of reporting here. Here. You're kind of creating a dashboard, you're using SQL to kind of pull that data, and eventually you're probably using some data visualization software like Tableau just to turn your rows and columns into that graph. 
All right, and finally we get to the mastery level. And to be honest, you know, if you're a master at something, that means that you don't need to improve at all anymore, right? That's kind of the definition of a master is that, you know, they've basically plateaued out in skill level for anything. And this is generally not realistic for anyone, right? We all have kind of things that we can learn. And I also have a lot of things that I can learn in SQL every single time I use it. But I would say that the biggest difference here is the fact that most of the mastery level, 90% of the time, you don't really need to go learn new concepts. You can kind of just jump into SQL and whatever thought or whatever analytics insight that you have, you can write your query and come up with a solution or at least have an idea of how you would get to that solution within a certain amount of time. So nowadays when I write SQL queries, I don't know the exact way of like what to do um, immediately. Like I don't know like how many lines it's gonna take and exactly I can't just pump it out in 30 seconds. But as I'm writing it, generally I don't really stop to think that much about what the next steps are. I kind of just go in with the flow and I start just kind of writing out SQL because I understand how to visualize the data set that I want and I understand what immediate like little small building blocks I need to do to get there. It's a little bit hard to represent but as we know from complex SQL most of SQL becomes complex because we build on top of our existing knowledge again and again. Let's take an example here. Let's say that we need to do a funnel analysis on an onboarding flow right so we want to see how many people drop off from step one in the flow all the way to step five. So to me I think this is a pretty complex query for anyone. I think this is kind of a mastery level, right? But what it starts out with is just understanding the fundamental building blocks of, you know, finding the drop off rate for one of those steps and then applying that same formula to the rest of the steps and then bringing all those queries together. So that's kind of what the mastery level I think achieves to me in terms of this expert level of being able to understand the different kind of sub queries you have to build and then how to combine them together to get an accurate data result. If I were going to talk more tangentially about what you should know as a mastery level SQL person, I'd say understanding window functions really well is uh, one where it showcases your mastery level skill. I would say if you can write ETL pipelines and be confident in them, that's also great. And then lastly, if you actually understand how to create SQL databases and tables, like set up foreign keys, you now have a fundamental understanding of SQL where you're not just reading data from the database, now you're actually writing data and you're creating tables, right? So you have this fundamental level of knowledge where you can actually insert data into the database versus just always kind of pulling data out. I would say the last thing that kind of showcases if you're a master at SQL is also the fact that if you can actually debug other people's queries relatively quickly. The thing about what I'm saying is that it's all kind of hand wavy at times, right? Just because you're really good at window functions doesn't mean that you're going to be pro at like analytics queries. These are all kind of just correlated skill sets that we use to use as kind of tangential markers for how good someone is at SQL. How do we master SQL as fast as possible? There's a couple ways to do so. If you're just starting out, I'd highly recommend to just start working on data science projects that involve SQL, in which instead of analyzing the data using your favorite tool of choice, to actually insert the data into a SQL table instead and write queries against that. If you don't know any kind of data analysis tools at all, like Pandas or Excel, then you can start from the ground up and just learn the syntax, but start approaching them by solving problems that you yourself want to achieve, right? So for example, if I'm looking at housing data on Zillow and I'm like, okay, what's the average price of houses in Houston, then I can write a query for that pretty easily. Essentially here, what I'm doing is I'm solving my own question with my own answer, right? And I think if you continuously do that with harder and harder questions that you have, you'll learn SQL pretty quickly by through trial and error. Lastly, I would say continual practice is key here. So whether you're solving problems on interview query or you're just doing data science projects, I think doing continuous repetition of practice problems helps build that mental exercise. It's almost like playing piano or learning an instrument because you're effectively doing doing like repetitive actions over and over again. And once you solve those easy problems, you'll be able to build up the skill set to actually solve harder problems faster and faster because you're basically taking those easy problems and you're doing them quickly and then allowing your brain to then try to figure out how to try those harder problems later on down the line. So just to recap, if you're looking to learn SQL, I would say that you can do so in six weeks by practicing problems on the internet for 30 minutes to an hour a day, I'm sure you'll be a master at SQL. Just make sure that you're increasing the level of difficulty of the problems that you're solving, right? Learning syntax and using W3Schools and other kind of courses is great, but unless you're actually applying your brain to solving the problems, then you won't learn fast enough. It's kind of like homework assignments. You can read all the course material you want, but at the end of the day, you still have to tackle these homework assignments. Same thing goes with learning SQL. It's all about doing the practice problems either at work 
work, in your real life job, or actually just doing them on a website like Interview Query, where you can use our default debugger and editor for everyday use, as well as three different kinds of SQL engines for your preference as well. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys learned something here and I'll talk to you guys later.